השקר שהוציאו המרבים בסוף לשכנע את העם, what was the clincher to rely on that? חטאו של העם במידתם, במידת הביטחון. מידת הביטחון. Okay, that's one topic. וטענת משה... עוד פעם בסוף. One topic. מידת הביטחון במידתם. The first one he talked about was the sin in their sending. Now he's talking about Bitachon. Then, Ta'anat Moshe Shel Veshamu Mitzrayim. Vachilul Hashem Shaya Notzar Baharigat Ha'am, Chas V'Shalom. In other words, Hashem said, Moshe said to him, what will the people say? He destroyed them. So what, you know, what kind of Achilul Hashem is that what he's talking about? Bi'ur ha-hashmata shel kama miyudgimu midot ha-rachamim v'zchut avot v'tfilat Moshe. Ubi'ur inyan slicha וגם שורש בכייה ללילה הזה לדורות. זאת אומרת, הוא אמר, אתה יודע, השם אוכל רחום וחנון, הוא לקח את זה משהו מהדברים האלה. מה זה היה כל כך? אוקיי? ושורש בכייה ללילה הזה לדורות. זכות אבות, וואי זכות אבות, אוקיי. זכות אבות, מה אתה יכול להגיד על זה? כן, איזה אחד? אני לא יודע. אה, אין לי רפרנסים? מה אתה אומר? מה אתה אומר? טעם או מצוות ציצית, והזכרתה בפרשה זו. וואי זה מנשן פה? מה זה טעם בפרשה ציצית? זה רק חלק מהפרשה הזו. זה רק חלק מהפרשה הזו. אז אתה רוצה לפרש על ה... Miraglim, which is, has, he has here about six different topics along those lines. From the reason to send them to what did the Miraglim do, even though they said the truth, what was the final straw that broke the camel's back, the lie that the Miraglim said that convinced the people, the sin of the people in Bitachon, What is Moshe's argument about Chilul Hashem, if Hashem would destroy them? And what, in his prayer, he leaves out some sections of Yudkum and Midot and Sut Avot. What was the... And what was the Slicha that Hashem had given? And why the people cry on that night for generations? Then he says, Tzam, the Mitzvot Tzitzit. What was the second one again? What was the chait of the Raglim, even though they didn't say the truth? Or do that, or... Yeah, I think so. Because it's a constant in our lives. Fine, fine, fine. Good, good, good. So, we are talking about chapter 13, verse 27. Um... That's where he discusses this. But here it goes. Um, the Pasuk is very simple, right? Um, and I take it and you know, under advisement not to read too much, as you said last week. Um, Chapter 13, verse 27. You got it? Yep. 13, yes, 27. 27. Well, they come back and they say a lot of things about the country, right? So in one of these, in Chavzayim, uh, 27, they say, they said, they, we came to the country that you sent us, and it is a land flowing with milk and honey. Yes. And this is its fruit. Right. Beautiful. Yeah. Everything's great. So what's wrong? I mean, what, what, you know, they obviously are telling the truth, right? right? So, makes you wonder what went wrong if they're telling the truth. So, if you look at the Ramban on yes. that verse, 27, 1327. It's here. Yeah. Oh, you have the Ramban there? Oh, oh, fine, fine, good. Because so, this has the... The Pesukim. The Pesukim, exactly. Very nice. Very good. And... Um, Two years, I think, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Sweet. Yes. Okay. And it has Rashi in it also, right? I th yeah, yeah. 
Russian 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 the only difference these guys avoid and uh, you know what I like to enjoy the Kabbalistic ideas you know <laughs> here How do they you don't find it here you find Kabbalah and uh, all wow. these interpretations. It's the same text. Uh, yeah, but I don't know why it is avoided in this, in this. In How do you know it's avoided? Yeah. Because they say to you. The Ramban text, they avoid They, they say that the outdoors say that uh, they leave out of the you know. <laughs> Very strange, you know. Very strange. Okay, new, so you got 37, 27, 13, 27. The gums of Atchalab Advashi, key. And it is also a land of milk and honey. Babur Shitsiva Otamir Otashminahi Mraza, he told them when he sent them, he said, go and find out if it's a prosperous fat land or or thin, right, or skinny. So they told him, it's great, right? Then his answer is Hayesh by Aitzimaim. And on the tree, on the a question that he sent to them, come back and tell me if there's a lot of trees there or not. Hey, she will go Here's the fruit. So you see, that it's got fruit. It's got trees, right? Mm -hmm. Even though they brought big, they brought uh, they brought uh, grapes, no? One, one big grape. A big yeah. grape, isn't it? Yeah, but okay, so it's not really a tree. It's a vine. Okay, he can't see how tamli haroto. He wanted to see it. Moshe did. In all of this, they said the truth. And they were replied to what they were commanded. Right? If Moshe asked them more questions, right? The people, are they powerful? Are they big? Are they small? Are they in big fortified cities or not? So, of course, when they came back, the job was to tell than what he wanted to know. So, so far, so good. He, he wanted to know, are they strong or weak? Are they in camps or in fortified cities? So, so far, they did nothing wrong, right? right. So obviously we're leading up to the question, if so, then what did they do wrong? What's wrong with the Miraculous story? So, so far, so good. But, Rabban goes on to say, about Risham the Milat Ephes. There's Ephes. one word. Ephes means but. But. Or but. Indeed. But is probably better. Mm -hmm. Because indeed means many things. Mm -hmm. It's not a good word. But. Okay. But. But however. Right? However. In other words, if you start by telling it's a very fat land, it's got great fruit, the people are strong and they're in the cities, but we'll beat them, we'll win them, we'll beat them, right? But they said, instead, the fat, the land is fat, everything is great, right? But the people are strong and they live in fortified cities. But means you are that it's enough. a very attractive land, but we have trouble, we have, we, have, we have real problems. We won't be able to do this, right? The but. So if you look at the Psukim, Chabzayim, it says, the very next pasuk, when they start talking about the people, they say, Ephes, however, the people are strong. Okay. Yes, yeah, so it says that is an argument against going. It is a weakening argument. It sounds like this is something you're saying, is it? It is absent and uh, impossible for us. It will not be possible, no way, to beat them. Mm -hmm. um, like the pasuk in, the Ephes is used in a few places in the Torah. He's going to quote you a few. <coughs> <coughs> in Tehillim. Is it possible? Is it possible that God will forever be kind? Right? It means you're suggesting it's not possible, is it? You know, that's not possible that, that God will be giving you chesed forever. The ain od Ephes Elohim. And there is no other God. Right? But Him. But Him, so to speak. Formulation. Right, it is. Vine Amrulo Ha'aret Shrina Begam Zavat Chalabot Vashra Prito Aval 
this is what's meant, right? They said, the land is good and wonderful and here's the good fruit, but it's not possible to come there because they are strong and the cities are fortified and great, right? And also children of giants we saw there. And they said, oh, and they said, furthermore, Amru'od, Amalek Yoshei Ba'aretz Anegev, the Amalekites who were pretty dangerous to them, back in the desert, they are sitting in the Negev, that's another part of the country. Lirmoz, she'en sham revach labo ba'aretz misham, to suggest that there, that is not a good place to go into the land, right? If the Amalekites are in the south, it means we won't be able to go in in the south. Kikulam giborim, because all of them are powerful. You know, if the Amalekites are the south, mm-hmm. and the Canaanites, Canaanites that they described just now as being powerful, is in the west, which is towards them, right? The west is towards. I'm sorry, the west is towards the sea. He said that, and, and also, Mizrach, excuse me, and also the offspring of the giant are there. Yeah, I don't right. know who they are. Don't ask me who they are. But uh, so Midrash, uh, Midrash, you talk about these people, children. Of I know you would like this because it's Kabbalah. Yeah, no, because I am trying to reconnect with uh, Noah and all the people who are... The children of the... Uh, and after the that, there again, the giants on, on the earth, so... The question okay. is, where... Where are these guys coming out? <laughs> I don't know. Like okay. Will Chamberlain, maybe. Hmm? Like Will Chamberlain, maybe. <laughs> or Shaq. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so if the, the Malaitis are in the south and the Canaanites are in the south and the east and west and the ha- MRE in the mountain, right? So we're surrounded by all kinds of bad people. They actually, therefore, you could say they told the story that they were supposed to tell. But at the same time, the way they told the story, the Aniu Leva Amberemes, but they hinted to the people by giving them this information this way, they only hinted that it was bad news to go because they're afraid they're afraid of Moshe and Aaron, right? You're not going to go back to the people and rebel and say, people, we can't go. They couldn't do that because Moshe and Aaron are standing there listening. But if you tell the story in a certain kind of way, then, you know, in the South, the Amalekites are there. I'm telling you the truth, right? I'm not, I'm not saying that you can't go, but I'm telling you a story that the, there's a lot of good fruit there, but the people are very powerful. I didn't say anything bad. I didn't say anything bad. I didn't tell you not to go, but it's a subtle way of, of discouraging the people from going, right? That's interesting, right? They told an answer to everything that he asked them, Moshe had asked them, except one thing. He said to them, are they many or are they few? Few, yeah. Right? And they didn't answer that. Mm-hmm. They didn't say anything that the people were many. Pechein lo hiskiru tova. Mm-hmm. What do you mean? Oh, you mean they said zavat but they didn't say tova. Tova imra. That later on they wanted to tell them that, that the people, that the land devours its people. Oh, and therefore, I guess, if it's a land that's very difficult to live in and it devours its people, then the only people who would be able to survive the land are very powerful people, but they wouldn't be many. Because the weak ones are, you know, it's natural selection, mm-hmm. I suppose, right? Mm-hmm. The weak ones will be destroyed. So they didn't talk about many or few and whether the land was good, being kind to its people or not, right? Mm-hmm. The people understood the hidden meaning, the hints that they were trying to give. Mm-hmm. So people started to complain, right? Look what they're telling us. You know, from the outside, you would say there's nothing wrong with what they told them because they told them the truth. Right? But the hints were discouraging. So they started complaining. Therefore, 
we understand now why Kalev, which was one of the good guys, um, quieted them down and tried to calm them. Kishitekotam, he made them quiet, he quieted them. Ba'amar, and he said to them, Alo na'alev, we will go up. Kiyachol nuchala, because we're able. We will be able. Denying the hint that the other people had said. The other people never said, I did, we, we won't be able to beat them, but they said it in the story in such a way yeah. that hinted it, right? Now he is telling them, Yechol nu'alev, nuchal. Lomar emetu sha'am chazak, it's true. What the people said, he's telling them that these people are powerful. Avalanachnu, nechazak mehem, we're going to be more powerful than them. Ume arahem abitzurot, and greater, and we're going to be more powerful than their fortified cities. Al kain amarla az anu amar. Kain amarla. Therefore, he said that. Okay. Az anu amaragli. Something not right? No, he's okay. Then, you understand the dynamics now, right? The Maraglim first said the truth and didn't say anything about not being able to go. They just wanted to communicate subtle by hints well, they to say the people that it's no good to go. We cannot beat them. Only afterwards. First, they did not say that we cannot beat them. No, that's the whole point of the Rambai. Mm. Two, three steps here, right? First, they talk the truth. Mm -hmm. And they don't say we cannot beat them. They just say, but, they're powerful, but, the Amalekites are at the bottom of the city, and the, and the others are northern the city, the country, letting the people understand under the, uh, you know, from the hints that they shouldn't go. But they didn't say they can't go. Kale, so people started to complain because they got frightened by what they were telling them. Kale tries to quiet them down and tells them, yes, we can't go, because he understood the hints that the Miranda was saying. Then, when the Miraculum hear, heard Kalev try to argue that we can go, then they come out and they said what they wanted to say. We cannot. Mm -hmm. We cannot. We cannot. Mm -hmm. Right? And they asked for an answer. Lo nukha la'alot ala'am, ki chazaku Lemor, afilu a'am, im yatsu elenu asadeh, lo nukha la'alot ala'am, ni lachem ba. All right. Even if they come out of the cities, we won't be able to, 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 to be powerful. Ki af ki. We certainly will not be able to, you know, call the home, that is, right? To actually uh, buy, uh, get over the fortified cities. Mm -hmm. I want to see the words that they use, we cannot go against the people. Mm -hmm. The Ramban is trying to say that that is like a call the We can't even beat the people, let alone their fortified cities. All right. Yeah, you remember Goliath said that, right? You choose a man and come, let him come and fight with me man to man. Right? So, in that case, Eli, El Ha'am, he's trying to use those words, advice him. Right? That's why the Rabbit said El Ha'am. Okay, so now you see what the Ramban is trying to explain. They did tell the truth, but it's the way you speak. Yeah. Sometimes that's a very important thing, right? Yeah. You talk to somebody and you tell them about a plan. If you tell them a plan and the way that you speak is already going to determine what people's reaction is. Yeah, you actually ingest them something. Even though you're saying yeah. the truth, you know, even though everything's right. Yeah, yeah. I have a question there, but it says that uh, I should have said in the beginning, take um, good, solid people. Why do they fall apart? It's a famous question, right? Yeah. These are the most important people in the country. So I just read. I just read. Do you do you get the uh, you, do you uh, oh you action? Uh, yeah. Did you read it? There's a, there's a section there under the Bible. You read that. You read that. So one of the things that's discussed there is a little article by Jonathan Sachs about the Levant Jurek, his memory about the Levant Jurek. So everybody talks about him in general, and one of them was Jonathan Sachs. He says that one time somebody asked the Levant Jurek this question, if they're the most important people, they are the princes, the heads of the tribes, and they're the ones who are sent with the most important job. They saw the miracles of God in the desert, and they saw the Torah given, and they come in, what's going on? How could they possibly be so negative? 
They don't know that God can beat the Canaanites like he took care of the Mitzrayim and Mitzrayim right. and uh, Yamsuf. I mean, what's going on? So the they were not the Mitzrayim more anything. powerful than these guys yeah, in the desert? The Egyptians were the most powerful people. Exactly. Right? So, yeah. mm -hmm. so he has an answer and he said, the Meraglim were not afraid that they would lose the war. They were afraid that they would win the war. Doesn't quite fit the game. <laughs> no. <laughs> they were afraid that they would win the war. Why were they afraid to win the war? That's what you'd want to do, right? It says they made a big mistake. They thought that the best life that was possible was the life that they had. In right where they were. In, in Egypt? They're in the desert. No, no, no. Oh, the desert. They came out of Mitzrayim, right? They're free people. God sends them the man every morning. They have Moshe teaching them the Torah. They're walking in the desert from place to place. Hashem's cloud is over them in the daytime. Fire is over the Mishkan at the nighttime. The Hashem is all in the middle of the midst and they are camping around him. What could be better than this, right? Mm -hmm. We go into the land of Israel, we know it's going to be different, right? We're going to have to fight a war. It's going to be human activity, we're going to have to plant fields, we're going to have to take care, you know, the Hashem already gave them the mitzvot of, of uh, Shemitah, for example, you know, when you go, and you harvest the fields, and you plow, and you seed, we're not going to learn anymore, we're not going to have time to sit down with a safer with uh, Moshe Rabbeinu, not going to be any man anymore, who knows if we're going to know if God is among us or not, right, it's, uh, all the time, mm -hmm. so if we win the war, we're going to be in a completely different sort, maybe we can talk the people out of this business. And then we can stay in the desert and be like we are. It's great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the big mistake that they made, according to the Lubavitch Rebbe, is that, that they are important holy people, but they made a holy mistake. They don't realize that what God really wants is not what's in the desert. What God really wants is a life in which people bring God into the world, not where just God is obvious and sitting around them, right? To do mitzvot, to be active, to be involved in the world, and to bring God into the world that way. And they thought that they had it better, that they understood better. And that was their big mistake, according to the Lubavitch Rebbe. I don't understand how you could put that into the words, Lo nuchal la'alot el ha'am, ki chazak hu mirenu. I guess they would be lying. You know, they, you know, according to him, yeah. they would be lying. They know that we could beat them, but they were trying to discourage the people so that they wouldn't need to go. And they wouldn't have to change their lifestyle. Mm -hmm. That's what the Lubavitch Rebbe said, according to that's actually a mystery. It's a mystery. But this <laughs> looks to me that uh, that the is the I am saying some Kabbalist or whatever. Sure, sure, of course. I but uh, I see the people. Okay, you say and the, the Rebbe say um, living in the desert, and um, it's like. A, people to come to embrace the Torah totally, totally. Because if you're in the desert, you can make certain misbots. But these giants means the harders that you have to do in your life to get all the misbots that you have to, to perform in Eretz Israel. To me, like, uh, these giants represent a good thing, not a bad thing, because you have to make uh, work. yourself work harder than before in order to get. Yeah, that's that's, the, the, that's what you say. That's the truth. But these the the tribes spies did not think so. They thought it was better to be where they were, not to do those mitzvot of work, so, because they had God with them. That's the thing with the giants. The giants represent for us a good thing because it's it's, it's like uh, you are. Climbing a, a, a rock. It's, like it's, no. a, it's a challenge. A challenge. Oh, so it's not like real people. Not like real people. Mm. It's, it's going into Eretz Israel is a big challenge. It's true. Yeah. To create a society is a big challenge. They didn't have to do that in the desert. I mean, exactly. You said, okay, we don't have well, now the, the man. We have to make a shemitah. We have to make a things and things and things and things. So, oh boy. <laughs> Twice. No. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like the uh, cat. That's like Sanasuti, Jonathan Sachs. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Maybe well, that's what he's trying to say. I mean, uh, 
You don't think it's possible for human beings to, 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 no, to have confidence in theory when you don't have to actually face the, the story. Uh, and, then, and then when you actually come face to face with something, the miracles you had before, you're kind of a little scared again. Yeah, I mean, uh, Time here's a guy with a machine gun, right? Right? Here's, a guy, here's a guy with a machine gun standing in front of you. So you say, oh, I don't have to leave either because I have clear jumps in front of you. I should go, so I don't have to be afraid of this washing. But they, it's real. I mean, people killed, people died. Who knows if this war is going to be like the war of independence in which we lost thousands of people? It's scary. Is it, is it possible that, that human beings are human beings, even the, even the tribe's leaders? I mean, certainly the rest of the people who listen to the, to the, Nisiyin, they started crying and they said, what are you going to do? Hashem took us into the desert to kill us here. Mm -hmm. 600,000 people said that. Mm -hmm. Except for the women. Mm -hmm. Right? Well, they're, 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 they say the women are okay. There's a big Russian number of noses. Right? <laughs> but when we say that the whole generation who was in the desert who died, mm -hmm. I think they're talking about the women. Anyway, anyway. But there, there may have been very few people who were loyal, but obviously this was a general rebellion. So we don't have to ask the question only of these Nisim, so therefore they're Yeshiva Bakim, right? But why, why did they not, why, why did they not say Ephes Why Asalam? Why, why didn't they say Yachal Mukhal, Yachal Mukhal? Because, well, the Pshat is they got scared. Right. The other Pshat that they saw, of the, of the Rebbe, that they knew very well that they would win, but they didn't want to. So you have to make up a story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this is, maybe this is the first Ramban in the... First Ramban in the Parsha? In the Parsha. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, uh, sure. like, you'd give obey, right? Yeah. At the very beginning of the chapter. First one in the chapter. Yeah. Chapter 13, Pasuk Beit. Pasuk 2. Yes. When Hashem said to him, we have a problem, right? If Hashem said to him, send, then you can't fault him from Sunday, right? You can't criticize him from Sunday. So the Rashi says here, when he says, send for yourself, the word is because you want to. I do not command you to send the Shlach lecha, if you want to. Im tiyutze shlach. Lech lecha. Yeah, lech lecha. Lefi shlach, well, that one is a difficult one because lech lecha doesn't mean go if you want. There, people say go for your own good. Because he, this was one of his note that Abraham was tested when he said lech lecha. So he's, he's commanding him to go if you dare to go, not if you want to go. Lecha. So there, Rashi wants to tell you how lecha fits in, and he says, for your own good, because I'm telling you that there will be great rewards for your going, right? Mm -hmm. Here, shlach lecha means, if you want to, go ahead and go. Very different, no? Lefi shabal Yisrael v'amun lecha nashim lefaneinu, because the Jewish people had come already to Moshe. And Moshe said in Dvarim. Which in Dvarim it is said, right? In Deuteronomy. So if you put those two things together, you have to say, okay, the Jews first demanded it, he said, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then God comes in and says, listen, if you want to, and if they want to, I'm not commanding you to go, but go ahead, right? Because after all, this is going to be a war in human terms, right? We're not going to make miracles the same way as we did in the, in the Kriyat Yom Suf. So, I have the aura, which, which, um, yeah, which is, well, sort of, yeah. so what? The Aaron was captured by the Philistines at one point. The Aaron led the people, but I'm not sure that it, it was like a magic uh, H-bomb. I don't know. Anyway, Kemoshe Neymar Vatikuun like Kulchem, like Moshe says in Dvari, you came up to me and you asked me. Who Moshe in Lachbashchina, so Moshe then after the people asked him, goes and asks advice from, the, from Hashem. Ki ani amarti lahem shi tova, I already told them. God says that the land is good. Shinemar Elet Khamini Mitzrayim Aler Stova, that I'm going to raise you from Mitzrayim to a good land. Chayehem, by by my life or by their life, Shaminotin Lahem Makom Litok Badavar. If they don't want to trust me, 
If they don't want to trust me, I'm going to give them an opportunity to, 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 to fail, you know, to test them, right? If they trusted me, they would know that this land is good, and they would know that I would take them into the land, so they don't have to any have any spies, right? But if you want to doubt me, Hashem says, okay, I'll give you enough rope to hang yourself, you know, so to speak. I'm a ragli, l'man lo yurashuma. In order that they, 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 they will not inherit it. Showed Rashi, in the Rashi. That's Rashi. And why, um, where is Hashem's compassion with people? I guess maybe he's getting to the point where he thinks it's time for them to live up to their potential. Maybe for a lot of complaining that other people were making all the Again time. and again and again and again. How many no. times do I have to, how many times do I, I have to, he said, Ad Matai, you know, but I was, if you remember, Ad Matai Natsumi. Till yeah. when are they going to scorn me? At Man, he said, when they went out on Shabbat the second time, you know, mm-hmm. to get to. So Hashem is obviously getting a little exasperated. Mm-hmm. Listen, I told you, I told you, I told you, I'm taking you out of the track. You didn't, you weren't sure, you didn't believe me, I didn't want to talk to you. And mm-hmm. I showed you that I told you the truth and I took you out. Right? Mm-hmm. Then you came to Hayyam Suf and you said to me, why did you bring us out of trying to kill us here? He said, possible that I would take you out of trying to kill us here, but you got excited. So I showed you that I took you through me through the, uh, the Yam Suf. Then you said to me, why did you bring us here? This water is bitter. Why did you bring us here to make us die of thirst? So I gave you sweet water to show you that you, again, you made a mistake. You, you, every time you get into trouble, you think that I'm hurting you. Mm-hmm. You don't believe me. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Then the Amalek came. Uh, before the Amalek came, they, uh, the Jewish people said, I wonder if God is taking care of us or not. Right? So Hashem said, what? You don't realize after all this? So I'll, let mm-hmm. you, I'll, I'll show you what happens when I don't take care of you. Right? So the Amaleks come. And then he shows them by a small band that look up to heaven, they beat them, right? And they, and they finally come to Matan Torah, and speaks to them face to face, and he tells them, I am your God, I took you out of Israel, and so on. And then so they make the egg. And then he finally forgives them, and he gives them the chance to make the Mishkan. And he shows them that he is coming down in their midst, mm-hmm. every day, all the time. Then they said, why do you make us starve in the desert here? You're going to kill us from hunger? He said, okay, I'll give you food every day. I mean, the so the time came. The meat is quail. Yeah, we want meat. We don't want just garbage. Mm-hmm. Man, we want, we want mm-hmm. meat. And, 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 and made mistake. Yeah. So then they so, so and then they wanted water again. So he hits the rock and he gives them water and it just doesn't stop. So I suppose it's possible. Here's the climax. If you go into the land of Israel, the only way that you can deserve to be in the land of Israel is if you trust God even more than you do in the desert, because there's not going to be fireworks every day. You're going to have to live a Jewish life there and be loyal to me and believe in me, right? So if you're not ready to believe me that I told you that this is a great land, so maybe you shouldn't go into this land. Maybe you don't deserve it because uh, you're never going to make it there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So Hashem is telling them, I'm no. It's up to you, man. It's up to you. People ask. Some uh, uh, explanation that what the people was thinking about his, his former life in, in Egypt when they is referring the flesh of the bodies when he's sharing the women or these kind of, of scenes. You know what I'm saying? When they are referring they me to, to me, about he's talking about sex. sexual relation in, in, uh, yeah, you know, in the Egyptian uh, area. I hear something like that. You hear, how you hear something? Yes, sir. So, yes, then, sir. so, then what is God, so what is God doing for them? He's going to give them quail? He's going to give them birds? That's supposed to satisfy the... Yeah, so what surprised to me, because yesterday one of my, our students asked that question. Hey, you remember certain rabbi that get, uh, give us an, uh, gave us a speech about this and referring the flesh to not like uh, the flesh of the birds or whatever, but the, the flesh that they were the, the so how is this, how is this, how is the how is the how is God giving them what they ask for when he gives them the birds? Maybe he's using the modern slang that birds are girls. 
Anyway, 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 yeah, okay, so, so, yeah, so that's Rashi, by the way, what we just now said is Rashi. Yeah. If that's true, right, that the people came to Moshe and said, say inspired, right, despite the fact that God promised them it was a good land, everything's fine, right, and he asks Hashem, could I send spies? Well, according to the Ramban, there's something wrong with Moshe. Why? Why doesn't he deal with the people and say, listen, people, don't you need, don't you know that God promised you it's a good land? Don't you know that God promised you he'll give you this land? We don't need spies, you have to believe me. Mm -hmm. right? why, why is he going to Hashem saying, what should, can I send the spies? And Hashem says, okay, go ahead, we want. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you want, is something wrong with Moshe. The Ramban is asking, right? In fact, there's a pasuk that says, it was good in my eyes to go ahead and send in Dvarim. You asking me, to send spies, and I agreed. Yeah, the idea wasn't good on my eyes. When you invade a country, you Well, that's the Ramban. But this is not Rashi. Rashi makes a suggestion that Hashem is upset. Right? And he says, they should believe me. But if they want to not believe me, I'll give them ropes to, to hang themselves. The story of, the, of Rashi is what the Ramban is talking about. So according to the Ramban, there's something wrong with that story, because Moshe is participating in this suggestion of going with the spies, right? Mm -hmm. why, why did Moshe say to them, go and find out if the land is Toba or Ra, good or bad? Mm -hmm. After Hashem had said, after right? Hashem said there is it's good. How can yeah. he say to them, find out if it's not good? He asked them those questions that, were, that he asked for. Therefore, they had to answer him. What? He asked him, what? Him, what is their sin? Well, we know. Later, we just read. Did he send them to tell him a lie that uh, that they are not in uh, in fortified cities? They're telling the truth. Don't think that their sin is just because they said it's a land that devours its people. Because they said it's a land that devours its people. Before they even said about the land devouring its people, there was already the people crying and complaining and Kali had to step in. Right? Our brothers, the people said, had melted our hearts by saying that these people are strong and greater than us. The people said. The people who were afraid said, our brothers, these spies, right, said, had frightened us, melted our hearts. No, Kale argued against that. Later on, Moshe himself says to the people before they go to Eretz Yisrael, this is after 40 years, before he died, at the end of his life, Moshe says to them the following, Shema Yisrael, Ata Ober Ayom Omet Ayarbein, Lavo Lareshem Koyim Gidoli, Ve'atsumim Inecha, Ve'arim Gidolot Uruzuot Rashamayim, Am Gadol Varam, Ve'ne Anakim, Asher Ata Yadata, Ve'asher Shamata, Mi Yitzay Vifnei Ra, exactly what they said, he's, he's telling them, listen, you're about to go into this amazing, frightening place, with all these terrible people, right? That you know nobody can stand up against them, right? So Moshe himself is telling them that after 40 years following this miraculous business, he's repeating even more frightening words than the rabbi did to the people now who are going into Eretz Israel, right? So it's the truth, and there's nothing wrong with saying that. If the rabbi were wrong in talking like that, so why is Moshe talking like that to, to their children? After 40 years. Right? Just like they had dissuaded the people from going, 
Moshe is now capable of doing the same thing. Except that after 40 years of observing Hashem, the capability of delivering a miracle is on a daily basis. Well, yeah, but they, he wasn't worried that they would be strong, that they would be frightened. Oh, what is the reason that Moshe would send the spies? To us? And why Moshe Ima didn't Arikova. do that before? The same words that he used to hear, why, why Moses didn't use speak the same words? He in the same way. That's what he's asking. Why did he send them? Why didn't he speak to the people? It's land. Is good. And the people are very weak and it's easy to be done. Then fine. So what's the one of those? Okay. Yeah. So the one of those is that they can And if they are this is, this has got to be a question mark. Yeah. Is it possible that if the people come back, the spies come back and they say no it's a bad land and the people are very strong, is he gonna take them back to the trying? What? If you take a medical test, if you take a medical test, before you take the medical test, you always have to ask yourself, why am I doing the medical test? If I find out that I am anemic, then I'm happy. If I find out if I'm not anemic, then I'm happy. If, if you're not going to do anything with either result, then you shouldn't take the test. Because it's all going to be the same, right? You only take the test to know. So somebody who's 98 years old, you don't do a stress test on his heart, right? Because if you find out from the stress test that he has a little blockage of the artery to his heart, so at 98 years old, you're probably not going to do surgery to correct that blockage. Right? So, what's the point of taking the test? You might be happy that he doesn't have a blockage, you might be not happy that he has a blockage, but you're not going to act on it anyway. What are you going to do? So he's saying, well, what does Moshe want to know? He wants to know if it's a good land and if the people are weak. That's nice. And if they come back and they say it's a bad land and the people are strong, so what's he going to say? Okay, I guess we can't go to Eretz Israel, we're going to go back to Mitzrayim. Is that what you're going to say? I mean, so what's the point of sending spies if you're going to do exactly the same thing no matter what? Mm -hmm. I think by then he's already absolutely committed to going in. Correct. So that's what he's saying, right? It's, in other words, it's a waste of time to send the spies if you're going to do the same thing no matter what. Oh, you mean, that means now. Now, now, at the time of the spies. At the time of the spies. Aval, Yeshuvah and Yan Bazet Yisrael. So now he's trying to explain. So let me. No, I don't think so. Let's, so he says, let's start from the beginning. Forget about what Rashi said, right? The Ramban. Let's go back to the beginning. Israel, like you said, the people are very simple. No, nothing special here. The people said, listen, we're going to go to war, right? So every time a person goes to war, you get some intelligence. You send in the CIA, you get some drones to take pictures, you satellite uh, information. You want to know what's going on, right? You listen in on the telephone of everybody. From, from the Taliban, and they want to know what you know what's their strategy, so you can prepare for a proper war. So we should do the same thing, mm -hmm. right? And then when they come back, these intelligence people, they will be the ones who go forward with the army to give us directions how to go, right? To find the direction, the, the paths. They will give us some strategic suggestions. Which city should we attack first? From which side should we come? You know, would it be easier to, to conquer the land directly or around in a circle? That's what people said in the right? Let them come back and tell us suggestions and ideas about how we will come to conquer it. This is a good idea. There's nothing wrong with what the people ask for. The Hulk of told in every time that you want to conquer a land. Moshe did the same thing later on when he had another war against Moshe Yaakov. Right? Moshe was going to go to Moshe did the same thing later on when he had another war against Yaazir. He sent spies to, to, you know, strategically look through. The Chen Yoshua Binun, he said the same thing. Two people were sent to Yerifa. Remember? Therefore, it was fine in Moshe's eyes to do this. 
He's trying to explain Dvarim, right? People mm -hmm. asked a proper strategic answer with a suggestion, and Moshe said, that's good. Ki akatub lo yismok b'chol ma'asav al-anais, because people are not supposed to be confident of miracles yeah. always. Yeah. You don't say, we don't have to prepare, we don't have to have any arguments, we're just walking in there to Israel, Hashem will conquer. Uh -huh. yeah, that's that's, that's not the way it goes. Aval, yitzabed banil chamim lehilachetz, lehilachetz u lehishamer leherod. Yeah, but people who are going to war have to be armed, have to be ready, and have to uh, do ambushing, you know, a strategic, uh, sneaky way to get it. Right. Just like when they went to Ai, Hashem himself gave them all kinds of suggestions. Remember the goal, and they make it believe that they're running away, so the people from the city will come out after them, and then they come the back and attack Ai. Otherwise, Hashem itself is not supposed to be why don't those just smash the city? I mean, who cares? I just said a little So then, Moshe goes to the Shira with this good idea. And it happened. I was there. And asks him, I'm going to go to the Shira. I'm going to say, go ahead. I'm going to go to the Shira. I'm going to go to the Shira. I'm going to go to the Shira. I'm not going to go to the like Moshe, like Rashi says, you don't believe in me, so I'll let you have a rope to hang this. Yeah. 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 means, stand for your own good. That's what you should do. You should do. Now, Fiyan, 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 they are in the same If they're strong, if they go directly into the country, they have to really be fortified. So they will start to be are we going to come and make sure that we're ready to ladders to go up on the walls, or should we go around them and not directly? If it's a bad land, then let's go to a place which is better for him. You can read. Our Well, thanks for the Even in Yoshua, in Yoshua's time, the people had to go into the highlands. The Jewish people had to live in the highlands because at least they to defend themselves from people who were attacking them. And the Canaanites were in the field. So that's what I should motion want to make. And Hashem found that fine. These are him. He moshe ba borshi yada ki he shnei nabu tova. The commotion in my land is about to come. Eretz tova, Eretz tova. Now we're going to make a land. She is new land. Ladad came. Kedei she avidu la'amis mechuli achli b'chulak la'od b'nsigah. But he said, "La tova hi ra'a." On the one hand, it was strategic because you wanted to know the place where we're going is wrong or not, right? Because they might want to go in way. But he was just planting. He knew Moshe knew this was going to be a lot of milk. So he wanted the people to be able to come back and say something. So the people could hear the and they would be encouraged in Italy. And that's why he told him to bring back food from the land, so because he knew that it was really great. And he knew that would be a good thing to show the people. So people will actually see it with their own eyes. Moshe knew it, but he wanted people to see it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Most of the Egyptians, remember, he lived in the palace of the, of the Pharaoh. And all of the officers and everybody in business and everybody who's traveled, merchants, knew Eretz Israel was a good one, right? But the slaves, who were always with their heads on the ground, you know, and, and working uh, like Abadat Pharaoh, didn't know. Okay, what's on Moshe? Sheyagidulem, kol inyamei aris lesomcham be'aliyat ma'alotaki yodayayabai. And he knew very well. But he wanted them to be able to bring concrete evidence to them that they would believe that this was great. And he read in the Lashon HaKatur, if you don't need Lach Moshe Bashkina, I think Moshe never asked the Shina what to do. This is the only Rashi had said that, right? But the Medan, the Rashi said that he wanted to talk to Moshe. Right? So therefore, so why does Hashem said to him Shlach? They had agreed, they had all decided to send them over. Usually you would send very few. You want to sneak into a land to take, you send only two people, one person, right? A very small group. They would send only a few. To Hashem, to go, Hashem, who knew the future, he said to Moshe, send one one person from each shape instead of just one or two. The Shayu and Asim them so that they would be important people among them. He chafetz Hashem Shayu Shavim Biyan Kol Hadidolim. He wanted consensus. Hashem wasn't afraid that he had to send only one or two people. He wanted to report a fact, a good report, to be not just one or two people because some other tribe would say, oh, I don't believe it, or whatever, right? Hashem said, no, I'll tell you what. If you want the job to be done well, send a senator from each state so that when they come back and they leave the land, so New York will be a good senator and Texas will be a good senator, all the jobs will be equal in their attitude. That was Hashem's plan. Not because he wanted to test them and make it more difficult. You got me? Okay, I got you. It's a very interesting story. It's got a different, completely different story. God hears what he's going to do, and he figured he's going to send two guys, you know, sneaking into the country and coming back with news. He said, that's a pretty good idea, but I have a better idea. Hashem said to him, I want you to send 10. I don't want you to send two undercover. I want you to send 12 people, right? There's going to be a lot of people. I want them all to be the chiefs of the tribes, not just some soldier, some private who has a training as a SEAL. You know what I mean? The undercover guy. I want them to be the top-notch people of the country so that when they come back, it will be understood and believed and encouraging to all the people. That was God's plan. Better than Moshe's plan. Got it so far? That's what, that's what he says is the scenario. That's why in Tvarim it is true. Moshe approved of it. It was good. And he was going to send. And he did send. This Parsha tells you Hashem heard what he was going to do, and he intervened and said, Moshe, listen to me, I mean, you, you have a good idea to send the people to, to do some intelligence work, but I'm going to tell you a better idea to how to do it. Send 10, send 12, and send you to head to the tribe. Okay, good. Now, Sheilatam Shishalu is on the again, boys, come to everybody, wait a second. I'm sorry, where am I? I don't know. He's going to be a slachim.
Eh. He knows the future. God does. Mm -hmm. And if these people who are the heads of the tribe, we are, the first word in the line is she, you. What page? Reishman Beit. About about twelve lines down, she yihiyu shavim be'inyan with a star next to the inyan. Yeah. Okay. So God said to him, "I want them all to be the heads of the tribe, mm -hmm. because Hashem wanted that they should all be equal in their greatness. Ki hagdolim, kol hagdolim. All of them should be equal stature. What will happen? Ulai, coming up. Ulai." Yizkaru v'yashuvu el Hashem. Maybe they will remember God's promise and they will return to God. Right? Because they are important people who lived through the Midbar and knew of God's greatness. Yashuvu el Hashem, 26. That's a kind of a pasuk from Tehillim. Right? Anyway. Shavim b'inyan. Shim yatslichu. You see that, I mean, if you see the bottom there in the, in the Shebel, what they're going to all be equal in greatness. If they come in and they do a good job and all the people will agree with them and everything will be great, then everybody will be in great merit. They will be rewarded. And if the heads of the people are going to be doing bad work, then everybody's going to fail. What are they, what's the, what it's are they, a test. What are they doing shuva for? The shuva Hashem is just an expression. Oh. If, if they will be loyal to God, he needs to say. Hmm. If they're, maybe they will be loyal to God. Vim ayin, and if they're not, so that all, everybody will be guilty at one time. Um, Oh, so if I, I guess it happens like this. If, I, if, if Moshe sends two guys, one from uh, Texas, you know, military camp, and the other one from New Jersey military camp, and they're both low-level intelligence guys, he sends it to them because they know how to climb mountains, and they know how to be strong, and they know how to swim well, and he sends those two people, right? Well, Yoshua sends too. Yeah, I know, I know. Well, Yoshua, I don't know. I don't know how to answer Yoshua. Here we're going about whether to come to the country or not. We're not talking about, this is a major decision. The other one is purely strategic. But let's say, what well, I don't know, I don't know how to answer that. It's true. That's the common way to do things. Hashem says, listen, I want you to send not two guys like that. Because if they went, if those two guys went, and they came back and they said, oh, you know, it's scary. We don't know if we can win the war, right? Let's say they come back. So, some people, the Texas people and the New Jersey people will say, hey, he's one of my boys, right? And he said it's not a good idea to go, so I believe them, and I will not want to go. The people from New Hampshire will say, ha, that's because he sent New Jersey people. They're not very courageous. They're not very good. So I don't believe them. I'm not so sure. I think we should send somebody from us. In other words, the people will not be united in their reaction to the report. So if they give an encouraging report, so nobody will say, ah, Texans, you know, they're so proud of themselves. I don't know if it's such a good idea to go. Uh, I'm from uh, Iowa, and I'm not so sure that those Texans maybe are just a little bit too great for their own boots. You know what I mean? So one way or the other, there may not be a complete uh, unanimity in the country, in the people. Hashem said, okay, this is a very important decision, right? And they will, the people will, and Hashem knows the future, that there's going to be some hesitation on the part of the people. So I want the great man from every, every tribe to go. When they come back and they give a report, if it's a report that's good and encouraging and everybody gets, let's go, let's go, God will help us and we'll go. So then it will be unified and everybody will be, will be rewarded, the, the tribes, leaders, and the people. If they come back, and they make a very bad report, which will discourage the people, then everybody will be in trouble, because everybody will believe them, because all of the tribe's heads are together. So God is actually doing a test. Right? He's setting up the, the situation in such a way that will succeed one way or the other. It will succeed in the positive sense, and it will succeed in the negative sense. Shavid. Okay. Okay. Right? Then the decree will be equal in all the people because but he sent 
he sent these 12 people according to God's command. Because he wanted the people to be the heads of the tribes. And it seems to me, and so on. what? what is he trying to say? Do you understand that last piece? What is Hashem? Hashem is doing it. He's trying to explain why the story is divided into two parts. Right? In Dvarim, it says, Moshe, said, Moshe reminds them, you're the ones who wanted the miracle. And I agree.